This is an accurate instrument, model 152 VTVM, vacuum tube voltmeter. And when I'm walking around places like a flea market and I run across a meter like this and I think I might want to buy it, I thought I'd uh, explain what I do to determine if I think it's worthwhile buying. Now, of course, there's always a risk, but um, I try to minimize that anyway. Well, one of the first things that I look for is this. Is the needle absolutely straight? Because if it isn't, in other words, if it's bent, that means that it has been way overtaxed somehow. Uh, maybe so much so that the uh, coil for the meter is open. And here you can see that the needle in the meter is very straight. And then the next thing I do is this. I'll take that meter and I'll quickly rotate it. And what I'm doing is I'm watching how that needle moves. Now here I'm going to slow it way down so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm looking for a very smooth motion when I have stopped rotating the meter, watching that needle go back to the zero position again. It's also important that the needle goes back to the same place each time. Now, of course, that's no guarantee that it might not stick at the upper end. But this is a very good sign and pretty reliable. Here is a look at the inside of this meter. And it looked to be very clean which is very encouraging and it didn't look like anybody had been in it before. I also had uh, put this on the Variac to make sure that the meter movement coil was not open and also I twisted a few knobs to see if the needle moved correctly, meaning the ohm adjustment and the zero adjustment, and a few scales, and I didn't see anything unusual. So that also is encouraging. This is also very encouraging. These calibration variable resistors, the seals are not broken. So with all that, I decided I'll go ahead and replace this electrolytic capacitor because it is bulging a little bit. And of course, that is not a surprise. And here I have replaced that electrolytic capacitor. And I also wrote down on the back of this printed circuit board, that one resistor gets a little warm, but uh, it's, I don't think, out of toler tolerance. But I wrote down the um, ohms for that anyway, in case it should burn up in the future, I'll know what it is, because right now I haven't found a wiring diagram for this meter yet. And I also put in a new battery. So now it's time for 
powering it up and see if the meter functions. Here I have the meter hooked up to power through my Variac and isolation transformer. And we just turn it on. Now the tubes are warming up. And you can see that the needle did move nicely, nice and smooth. Now, of course, I've got this way out of adjustment. That's the zero, and the other knob there that I almost turned was for ohms. Now I'm going to change the scale, and nothing weird happens, which what I mean by that is it doesn't bounce all over the place. It should, when you change scales like that, it should move a little bit but it shouldn't move a lot. Okay, now I have turned this to ohms. And I've got my red lead, and I'm going to short it out to the black lead and do the zero adjustment. And then back to the ohm adjustment. And you seesaw back and forth like that for a while between zero and infinity adjustment or the ohm adjustment. And you can see that that needle does move the way that it should. So this looks pretty good to me. So. It's about time to put it back in the box and clean it up and do some more testing. Thanks for watching.